record co-principal Kalonzo Musyoka has lashed out at Deputy President William Ruto for allegedly seeking comic relief through unsolicited advice to court principals on how to defeat the Jubilee administration in the 2017 general elections. Speaking today in Nairobi, Kalonzo expressed confidence that court will form the next government in 2017. And last Sunday, while in Raila Odinga's Bondo backyard, the deputy president urged the ODM leader to drop Kalonzo Musyoka as his running mate in 2017 or face defeat, as was the case in the 2013 poll. 10,000. Thank you very much, Mom. Last Sunday, while addressing a church service at Bondo Anglican Church during a fundraiser, Deputy President William Ruto advised court leader Raila Odinga on how he may actualize his dream of occupying State House. Raila is keen to battle it out with President Uhuru Kenyatta in the 2017 general election. Baba Ajipange 2017, na Uhuru, kwa sababu mimi 2022, mina kura ya nyanza. Eh. Manizana na uhuru hapo 2017. Sina mna hiyo? Na achagwe mtu mungine sasa unajua akichagua tena kalonzo mimi nitamulima tu. Kwa sababu unajua sasa mimi. <laughs> Ruto's remarks have rattled kalonzo musioka. The code core principle launched an onslaught to get back at Ruto, unleashing an uppercut on the deputy president. My friend William Ruto has enough personal baggage to grapple with. And if appointing himself political advisor to court principles would give him some measure of comic relief, then let the self-declared hustler be. Yesterday, while in William Ruto's home county of Wasnigishu, court leader Raila Odinga dismissed Ruto's criticism of Kalonzo Musioka as a weak politician who cannot help Raila win an election. <laughs> Lakini wachana na watu mba mimi niku nae hapa. Kalonzo hana manena na wewe. Wachana na Kalonzo. Kalonzo ni manaume na ea na weza. In a hard-hitting statement during a media briefing in Nairobi, Kalonzo Musioka accused the Jubilee administration for presiding over what he called tech-savvy looting of public funds through high-level institutionalized corruption. And in his own admission, President Uhuru Kenyatta has called global attention to pervasive corruption in his office. But for reasons only known to himself, he lacks the courage to name the fat cuts. When a president is held hostage by an evil cabal of corruption cartels, the outcome would make Anglo leasing and Godenbach look like child play. Kalonzo says the Jubilee administration has politicized the war on corruption by applying double standards. Kalonzo insists there should be no sacred cows in graft war. It is a pity that statecraft and resources are being mobilized to insulate Devolution CS Anwai Guru from accountability on suspected shady dealings in our ministry, while at the same time unleashing dogs of war on peripheral courts, cabinet secretaries and other senior government actors on flimsy, flimsy allegations of corruption. Let us make this point very clear. We will not drop the demand for a guru to either step down or be forced out of office to pave way for proper investigations into the award of tenders and jobs in a devolution docket. State House has defended Anwai Guru, saying she's not facing any criminal charges over the NYS saga. A section of politicians allied to Jubilee administration claim the opposition is targeting high performance in government in an attempt to divert the government from delivering on its promises. On Thursday at State House Nairobi, President Uhuru Kenyatta was awarded Africa's President of the Year 2014-2015 for his outstanding leadership and ability to build consensus locally and abroad. Kalonzo has questioned the authenticity of the award. Any group of students can get together and declare Kalonzo the best opposition leader. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's against... Uh... Yeah, and against who? When was this? When was it? You know, we all know about Mo Ibrahim's, for instance, Mo Ibrahim's award to the best president in Africa, in the continent. And I think the last known winner was former President Chisano of Mozambique. And that comes with an award of, I think, $5 million. We must not make this thing cheap. Patrick Amimo, KTN Weekend Edition.